rad part about this build is we're taking you guys all the way through it from start to finish. So thank you very much to Justin for doing all this stuff. Yeah, buddy, we're back at shock therapy. They got the RS1 done. They got all the Fox shocks all dialed in. They went out and tested it. Let's go inside and see what the boys did to it. What's happening, boys? Oh, Ernie's got the tape measure. That means something serious going on. It's definitely a problem. <laughs> What's happening, dude? How's it going, man? George, good. how are you doing today? How are you guys? Good, good. Good. We're just kind of like gawking at our uh, magnificent, success. Magnificent work. Yes. Looks like you got a little bit dirty too, huh? Well, you can definitely tell that we've driven the car a little bit. We found the only mud out in the desert when it's been 115 <laughs> for the last 52 days. So, uh, but there is some. It does exist. Man, what happened? It looks uh, it looks almost completely different with the different shocks and the ride height and stuff. Yeah, so we've got obviously a little different ride height uh, with the spring package. We've got RC2s on the car now, so two and a half inch diameter front versus a two inch factory like Walker. Dude, I'm digging it. And we've got a pile of adjustability in these shocks. So the the uh, their their ability to have a bump stage that goes through the roof is incredible. So. You can have a plush ride and still not bottom the car out when you air it out like, you know, Lucas Oil Farm. Dude, that's vicious. All right, we're going to go over this bad boy. The two things that you were trying to do was obviously make it so that we can go through bumps and things fast. And you said that right now the setup with the suspension was really, really good. No Sick. power steering needed, nothing. Yeah, you don't need any additional power steering in this car. Um, as long as we change the wheel offset just a little bit, we get rid of all that feedback that comes with it. The car becomes more stable. Your arms becomes where you're death gripping two hands and you can drive it with one. Cool. It's a big change and you know how much, how important that is in a long race. Yeah, big time. So wheel offset's really important. Now that we've got massive shocks on this car with huge adjustability and the car can run through the big stuff, we want to make sure that you can run with the big stuff for as long as the car can. So I kind of got, had a question while I was driving up here. I was thinking, okay, first of all, we're going to race this thing, but what happens if I just wanted to take this thing to the dunes? How would it feel going down Sand Highway? Amazing. Okay. Amazing. So the car is set up for you to go and run the thing really hard in a race situation, which would be a little bit stiffer okay. than the average setup that we would send with a customer with a play car. But the cool thing about these RC2s that are on this car right now is you've got dual adjustment. You've got high and low speed adjusters. You've also got rebound adjusters on the bottom of the shock on both front and rear. And that's not common with any other factory shock that comes on these cars. That's super cool. It's huge because this adjustability allows you to take this car from full tilt, race, aggro, get busy and win a race. You can tune it down with adjustability to go out and play with the car. Slow it down or whatever you want to sure, do. Sure, can, you can plush in the car up you don't feel the chop and chatter and you can go out and play with your friends. Or if everybody's like, hit that jump, then you can slow it down. Rank, rank them up, up and you've got it. You can get right back to Lucas Oil jumps. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, maybe you can explain a little bit to me about the way that the wheel offset works. So Sure, sure. So if you take, it's really simple. If you look at the, the amount of dish that's on a wheel from the flat surface to the outside, this distance right here is telling you about how much offset there is. In this one, it's about a three and a half inch amount of wheel to the outside right we measured this wheel it's actually a four three four means there's four inches to the inside three inches to the outside Got hence it. a four three that is uh, really wide and it really creates a lot of feedback in the steering the wheel yeah, so the feeling that you're talking about is uh that nastiness in the yeah. wheel that you can't ever stop and okay. the car skating around so and because that you've done some videos before and it makes it so that the leverage point on the shocks and on the suspension is different, right? Yes, it widens it, but mainly if you could if you can imagine the front tire pivoting when you turn the wheel, pivoting on one axis. Right. Okay, if you take the tire and you come out much wider and hit a rock, you have a lot more leverage to pivot. Right. Okay, that's what this offset does. The wider offset gives the rock leverage against your steering wheel. And you feel that if you have the, the tire and wheel in the right spot right and there's no leverage for that rock against your steering and all of a sudden there's no feedback it makes total sense yeah. and then so the one that uh, kmc has provided us so has, take a look take a look at this outside distance much more very shallow. very simply take a look at this this tells you you've got a lot less outside distance than this wheel does way more shallow which means this whole wheel is pushed on in inboard and this is a 5-2 offset instead of a 4-3 so it has 5 inches to the inside 
So there's way more distance here. Way more distance on the inside of the of the of the spindle of the hub of the drive flange in the front and less on the outside, which decreases the leverage, which makes the car drive perfectly straight and less feedback in the wheel. Cool. Well, so that's going to be really good for all of us. And then maybe you could kind of go a little bit more in depth on the actual changes to the suspension. So we went from a Walker Evans stock shock. Yep. To yep. a Fox RC2. Yes. And just, well, first of all, thank you very much to, the, much to the guys over at Fox for doing that. The Fox guys stepped up and sent us shocks instantly to put them on your Dude, car. Dude, thank you guys so much. That was rad. Um, and so what did they actually give us then? So the original shock is a two inch diameter shock. It's a much smaller in diameter shock. It, does, it only has one compression adjustment. These have dual high and low speed adjusters and they have a rebound adjuster on the bottom, whereas the factory shock does not have a rebound adjuster. And being a larger diameter shock means that it can put up with bigger hits, you know, harder driving, longer distances without overheating, and still feel plush. So for a racer, you don't feel the rocks that will beat you up and you can drive the thing totally aggro into a hole and not bottom the car out. And for a racer, they just look cool as shit. So. <laughs> they do have a Kashima coating, that's what that's called. And that's a hard anodized, low friction coating that lasts a lot longer in race situations. That's that color that you see on the outside. It looks, so that was like one of the first things I noticed. Mm -hmm. It's also on the inside, and that's where the important part is, where pistons are having you know, friction, and they're wearing out wear bands and other things. That just doesn't Pushing, happen with yeah. this. Okay. You know, you, a normal shock, you'd probably have to rebuild it after, after a thousand miles. These shocks, under play conditions, they'll go 5,000, and under race conditions, they'll go thousands. And it looks like you guys also did springs and, uh, Yes, absolutely full spring kit on this is set up and the spring rates are dialed in for this car with this suspension being a long travel and some extra things that you've got on it for accessories like radios and safety and cage and all these items that add weight. These, the spring kit's perfect for that. So and you did valving too? Absolutely, the inside, insides are perfectly tuned for the car. Uh, we modify that for every car. Now we actually had a really good initial setup already documented for an RS1 because oh, really? we played with a ton of them. Sweet. Yeah, so I'm our kind of jealous because now I get to go play with one. You are going to be really excited. I know you weren't all that excited when you drove it off the trailer, but I can't wait for you to go put this thing through some massive stuff. You're going to be impressed. I can't wait either, man. It looks super cool. So um, if you guys do want to end up going racing, I mean, this would obviously be a bitch and play car, but if you do want to end up going racing, what kind of... Uh, price tag are we looking at for a lot of this stuff? Box RC2s are about 4,000 bucks complete and that comes with our internal valving tuned for the car and it comes with the dual race spring kit. Okay, cool. So it's actually a smoking deal because Fox RC2s from Fox are $4,000 and they don't have custom tuning or custom springs. So Thanks, you're so you getting get it all. all for free. That's pretty cool. Yep. Now I know you've got a bunch of stuff coming up that you're going to be taking this back and putting on this car, right? Yeah, so the the rad part about this is, I'm moving some uh, UTVs in here. The rad part about this build is we're taking you guys all the way through it from start to finish. So thank you very much to Justin for doing all this stuff and taking the time out to do videos with us. But we also have some hard parts that we're going to install in the next video. And uh, one of our buddies, Travis Zollinger, uh, has given us some pretty cool stuff, man. So. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're gonna do, and this is still something that I don't know too much about, is these rear carriers with uh, the bearings uh, locked in, I guess you could say. Yep, so on this rear uh, carrier, not only is this billet aluminum, obviously it's a beautiful piece, fully CNC'd, and this aluminum is a higher grade than the castings that are on this car stock. But one of the failure points on a factory hub is that there's a C-clip or sur-clip snaps into the factory hub and holds this bearing in place those clips can snap or pull out and then you lose the drive flange and you lose the bearing and it ends up failing the hub Zollinger has cured that because this outer nut this stainless steel nut right here is threaded to the actual hub so it, it completely locks exactly in so this unit is tight so I can't take it off and show you but this unit is threaded in place and actually locks that bearing in place this can't pop off like the factory clip so you don't have bearing failures. So one of the things that we talked about in the beginning videos was that we're doing an entry level uh, UTV build. But I, I do think that this is something that 
if you want to maybe make the next step from entry level, you could use the stock stuff, but then upgrade to this later as well. Absolutely. I think that if, uh, as you start running the cars harder and harder, a stock car will be fine at first, but as your speeds go up, then you'll find the weak points. And one of them is going to be the factory clip and you'll find yourself doing these hubs. But make sure you're growing with the UTV too. Don't over push it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, he gave us some tie rods too, which are really cool. Yep. Here's a tie rod from Travis as well. And so uh, these are longer because of the uh, long travel that mm -hmm. we got from uh, SDR. So these are going to be really cool. They it's also a higher grade of material too. Yeah. And they replace uh, the stock ones, which are really, really skinny. So it'll be nice to have these big bad boys on there for a little bit of durability. The stock, the stock ones tend to have weak uh, uh, failures when you start running long travels, big tires and racing. You know, they weren't designed for it can't fault them for it but you got to go with big parts when right you're... too much leverage right. and then uh, another thing that travis did which is another cool factor is the uh, uh clutch cover yeah so this is actually um a pedestal or a tower brace so on the clutch assembly for this car we'll get into detail when we get into the clutch for you guys but there's three towers with sliders and rollers and weights and this brace ties them all together because they tend to spread apart and become a, a weak spot in the clutch and have failures and belt failures eventually. Does that actually do anything like for that. performance though? So this isn't going to make you faster. Okay. But what this is going to do is keep the clutch on there longer and it's going to keep the belt temps lower. Oh, okay. So because belt temps lower. I heard last time Justin tell me that was a good thing. So Huge. Yeah. If you have high belt temps, you're going to slow down and that's not good for racing. All right. So um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about was some other people that I haven't met yet that are going to be coming on board with the build. Uh, Justin had called his guys over at, I forgot who you said the name was, that Evo Power Sports. So Todd Zaccone is yeah. one of the owners in gym and um, they've jumped on board and they're going to go ahead and throw some horsepower at the car and possibly a clutch kit too. So that'll and, be really uh, cool because I don't know anything about clutches. Yep, and we get to go through that a little bit uh, next week if you have the time. Also, we're probably gonna have RJ from Jeffrey's Performance put that flash into the car. Oh cool. And we can show you what's involved in it and how actually simple it is once the tune is perfected for them to just load it in the car and go. That'll be super cool. I can't wait for that. When I took it off the trailer, I told Justin it was slow, so he's <laughs> making me go faster. <laughs> we'll fix that. All right. Well, I really appreciate it, man. You guys did a killer job. Anytime, man. So this thank you. Phase one of many phases. Oh, actually, you know what? We should thank all the boys that worked on it. Who else worked on it with you? Man, a little bit of everybody was on this car. Uh, Mitch, who's actually working somewhere else in the shop right now. All the guys in the assembly area put their hands on this. I probably should have the whole shop raise their hand. But, uh, you know, right now we're actually working. So Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for following along with us. We hope this helps you guys with your build, too. So if you have any questions, you can obviously ask Justin or the guys at Shock Therapy. You can comment below or you can uh, message us anytime on uh, social media. So. Hopefully you guys like it. I'm so excited. This is really cool that all these people came together and are helping out to get me back to the UTV World Championships. I'm not out there to win the race. I'm out there to win at life. So I appreciate all the guys at Shock Therapy's help. Thank you very much, Justin. Right on, man. Can't wait to see you running. All right, Matt. We'll see you out there, too. Yep.